morning to you all. We have studied the basic concepts, right? Today we are going to see the rules which to be followed when we are drawing the ray diagrams. Okay? Uh, we will get the images in different places that we are going to see one by one. Before that, we should know the rules which should be followed when we are using both concave mirror as well as convex mirror. So today, first we will see what kind of rules are there when we are using concave mirror. Okay? Uh, the basic things we know that concave mirror will be, see if you are taking a sphere like this, then we are taking the center of the sphere. I have told you that only one part of the spherical mirror will be cut and it can be used with a concave mirror. So cave, what do you mean by cave? When you are going inside a cave, how oh, it will be? So it is, this portion is called as concave. We are taking this, we are marking it as MN. This is the aperture, right? And I have all told you that whenever you take the aperture, always you should show the shaded portion. Okay, that is very important. So in the ray diagrams also, we are going to show that the shaded diagram. So this is concave mirror. And I have told you that the center of the circle is called a what? C, that is center of curvature. It will be denoted by capital C. And this line which is moving through the center of the circle is called as principal axis. It can be denoted as X, Y. Then the point at which this principal axis is moving, no? Through the mirror, that is called as pole, and it can be denoted as capital P. The distance between center of curvature and pole is called as F, that is principal focus. Okay, and between the principal focus and pole, this is mentioned as small f. Okay, so these are the basic things you have studied, keeping this in mind. We are going to see what are the rules, okay? There are four rules which will be followed. We will see one by one. See the first rule, okay? The first rule is, when a ray of light passes parallel to the principal axis, when a ray of light, see first you should show only this much, okay? And you should label everything. When a ray of light passes parallel to the principal axis, as soon as you draw the ray, you should put the arrow mark. That is very important. So this is C and this is F. This is P. So the basic things, every time when you are drawing, you should mark all the, um, you should name it. Okay. So here, when a ray of light is passing parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, what will it do? It will, see here, when a ray of light passes parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, it passes through the principal focus. This is the first rule. Be very careful. When a ray of light passing parallel to the principal axis, which is parallel to the principal axis? This ray. Okay, this is principal axis. So, when a ray of light passes parallel to the principal axis, who is this? This is which mirror? Called K mirror. Okay? When a ray of light is passing parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, it will pass through the principal focus. This is very important. See, this is what I have shown. When a ray of light is passing parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, it will pass through the principal focus. This is the first word. This is the first rule to be followed. Tell with me when a ray of light passing parallel to the principal axis after reflection it will pass through the principal focus. Okay. The first rule is done. The next one. See same way I am drawing the next one. When you are practicing you should practice it by drawing. Don't just see the diagram and study. Practice it. Okay. 
market as MN, then this is pole, this is center, this is focus. All these things should be there. The second one tells that, first one, when the ray of light is passing parallel to the principal axis after reflection, it will pass through the principal focus. Now, the next one, when the ray of light is passing through the focus, which focus? Principal focus. When a ray of light is passing through principal focus after reflection, what will it do? It will come parallel to the principal axis. Okay? Same. Uh, just opposite to what we studied the, in the first one. The first one, when it comes parallel to the principal axis after reflection, it will come to the focus. Here, when, it, when a ray of light is passing through the principal focus after reflection, it will come parallel to the principal axis. Okay? This is the diagram. So, it is coming through the principal focus after reflection. It is coming parallel to the principal axis. Okay? Clear writing. Then the third rule tells that same way. You will mark everything. What are the things you should mark? Tell it with me. This is M, this is N, this is P, this is center and this is focus. Okay. The third one tells that when a ray of light is passing through the center of curvature. See, this ray of light is passing through the center of curvature. After hitting the mirror, that means after reflection, it will come back in the same path. See here? When a ray of light is passing through center of curvature, it's reflected back along the same path. It means angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. That means it is zero, right? Okay. So this is the diagram. See, you can also use two colors to show. Okay. The rays, it will be easy for you to study. First time when you are practicing, no, you should have more patience and concentrate more. So when a ray of light is passing, through the center of curvature, when it is hitting the mirror, what happens? It will reflect. After reflecting, it will come back along the same path. So, arrows are very important. If you are not putting arrows, you will not be able to know what kind of uh, direction it is coming. So, we, in which direction it is coming? First, it is coming in this direction and then it is coming back in the same. So, I am showing this. So, when it is passing through center of curvature, that is C, it is reflected back along the same path. That is, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Okay? So, whenever you are drawing this, near that you write it. So, it will be easy for you. Okay? To remember. Okay. So, the third rule we have studied. Easy rules, no? Okay. So, the fourth one is, same way, you should draw the same thing. What are the things? First, you should draw the principal axis and then you should show the aperture that is MN. Then this point is called as P, center is called as C and this is F. By handwriting. Okay. Now, a ray of light is coming and hitting the pole. Tell me, what will happen? This is angle of incidence. So, it will come back as angle of Reflection. Whether it is correct or not, you check once. No. Why? Angle of incidence should be equal to angle of reflection. So, that is the law we have studied. No? Angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So, if this is 30 degrees, this also will be 30 degrees. Okay? So, this is angle of incidence and this is angle of reflection. See here? The ray incident to any angle at the pole, this is the pole, right? The ray which is incident at any angle at the pole, what happens? The reflection happens. The reflected ray follows what? The loss of reflection. So, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. What is the rule? Angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Okay? So, four rules, very easy rules. Practice it. Okay? First one, when the ray of light is coming parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, it will come through the principal focus. Second one, when it is coming through the principal focus, after reflection, it will come parallel to the principal axis. Third one, when it is 
coming to the center of curvature, when it is passing through the center of curvature, after reflection, it will come back in the same path, fourth one, it obeys what? Laws of reflection, that is, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. For that, when you are already a ray of light to pass through or to hit the pole, what happens? Angle of incidence will be the same, so the reflected ray also will be the same. Angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Okay, next we are going to see image formation. We are going to see how image will be formed using a concave mirror.